In this video, we will show you how to scan and the sonor anatomy required to perform ultrasound guided quadratus lumborum blocks. As indicated here, the quadratus lumborum blocks have a number of potential indications for abdominal, pelvic, and retroperitoneal surgery, as well as a few case reports recently for their use in hip surgery. In terms of dose, we would recommend a minimum volume of between 20 to 30 millilitres of local anaesthetic per side blocked. We tend to use levobupivacaine, and for midline or laparoscopic procedures, we cite bilateral blocks. Care, therefore, must be taken not to exceed the maximum dose of local anaesthetic allowed. Here we are looking at the muscle layers of the anterolateral abdominal wall from the right-hand side. We've got three flat muscles, the external oblique, the internal oblique and the transverse abdominus and a paired vertical muscle, the rectus abdominus. The intercostal nerves from T6 to T12 line the plane between the transversus abdominus muscle and the internal oblique. Moving the anterolateral abdominal wall muscles, we can see here how their posterior relations communicate with latissimus dorsi, quadratus lumborum and psoas major. By removing psoas major, you can appreciate the potential path of local anaesthetic to ascend to the paravertebral space. From this posterior lateral view from the right hand side, you can see the relationship between latissimus dorsi, erector spiny, and the quadratus lumborum muscles. This transverse or axial slice of the abdominal wall is a useful way to examine the relationship between the muscles of the anterolateral abdominal wall and the posterior abdominal wall. We can here focus on the muscles psoas major, quadratus lumborum and erector spiny. Let's review the fascia around the QL muscle. Anterior to QL lies the anterior thoracolumbar fascia which is continuous with transversalis fascia and runs up over psoas major. At the posterior aspect of the QL muscle lies the middle thoracolumbar fascia. An injection at the lateral aspect of the QL muscle was previously termed the QL1 block or the lateral quadratus lumborum block. An injection at the posterior aspect of the QL muscle between QL and erector spiny is called the posterior or QL2 block. And lastly, an injection at the anterior aspect of the QL muscle between it and psoas major has been termed the transmuscular quadratus lumborum block or the tequila block. Let's proceed to scan. This is a patient lying in the left lateral position and a curved array probe is placed over the anterior abdominal wall. As we slide the probe laterally, we can appreciate the rectus abdominus muscle centrally, the external oblique, internal oblique and transversus abdominus muscles as well as the abdominal cavity. As we continue to slide laterally, we'll appreciate the liver coming to view with the patient's respiration. You can see the liver edge coming down. And then we can continue to move laterally over towards the lateral part of the abdominal wall. Once we have reached the space between the iliac crest and the costal margin, the depth of view is increased. We can now see a thick, dark muscle of quadratus lumborum and its relationship with the transverse process and the vertebral body. If you back onto the abdominal wall to reorientate yourself, you can see the three abdominal wall muscles and their connection as they come posterior and laterally with quadratus lumborum muscle. You can also, by rocking and tilting the probe, appreciate the relationship between psoas, erector spiny, and quadratus lumborum. With the probe held firmly in place here, we can indicate the potential needle paths coming from either an anterior aspect from the abdominal wall side, and you can see its relationship to quadratus lumborum, or a posterior aspect for a transmuscular quadratus lumborum approach. This first block is a transmuscular quadratus lumborum or tequila block. The needle is introduced from the left hand side of the screen from the posterior abdominal wall, passes over the tip of the transverse process, penetrates the quadratus lumborum muscle and then goes to the anterior aspect where the anterior thoracolumbar fascia is. As you inject local anaesthetic you can see the space very nicely opening up between quadratus lumborum, psoas major 
and the abdominal cavity. This second block is a posterior quadratus lumborum block, or QL2. Here, the left-hand side of the screen is the anterior abdominal wall side, and the right-hand side is posterior. A needle has been introduced from the left-hand side of the screen, just passed over quadratus lumborum, and is now injecting at the posterior aspect of quadratus lumborum, between it and erector spinae. This is at the middle thoracolumbar fascia level, you can clearly see the needle here, the posterior aspect of quadratus lumborum, injecting local anaesthetic and filling that space. We'd like to share some pearls with you for performing a quadratus lumborum block. As always, please pay attention to ergonomics. Allow yourself, the machine and the needle all to be within the direct line of sight. It is often easiest to use a curved array transducer to appreciate the surrounding anatomy much clearer. The patient can be blocked in the lateral position, which is often easiest, in the sitting position, scanning from the posterior aspect, or supine. If you are going to perform the block with the patient in a supine position, it is easier to place a wedge under the hip to allow the probe to reach the posterior abdominal wall. This is a volume block often using 20 to 30 mils of local anaesthetic per side. So as a result, please carefully work out the maximum allowable dose of local anaesthetic and stay within this limit, especially if performing bilateral blocks. There is always potential, especially with the anterior or transmuscular quadratus lumborum block, for the local anaesthetic to affect lumbar nerve roots. So please warn your patient about the potential for leg weakness. Ensure the needle path is visible at all times and superficial and away from abdominal and retroperitoneal structures such as the kidney. In terms of what to block when, the current vogue is either towards a posterior quadratus lumborum block, kind of like a posterior tap, or the anterior or transmuscular quadratus lumborum block. There have been some mention in the literature about intramuscular quadratus lumborum blocks, but we do not have experience for these.